The source of Lakshmi Prasad Dev Kutas Muna Madan is Newari Poetry. Muna Madan is a famous narrative poem written by the renowned Nepali poet Lakshmi Prasad Dev Kutta. It is a literary work that tells the story of Muna and Madan, a wife and a husband separated due to mother's decision to seek employment abroad in order to provide for his family. The poem explores themes of love, sacrifice, separation and the challenges faced by Nepali migrant workers. Muna Madan, authored by Lakshmi Prasad Devgota in 1936, is thought to have drawn inspiration from an 18th century Nepal Vasa ballad titled Ji Voyala Lakshmi Madun, which translates to It has not been a month since I came. This composition, well received in Newar society, narrates the tale of a merchant hailing from Kathmandu. He embarks on a business journey to Tibet, leaving his recently wedded wife behind. Ji Voyala Lachi Maduni is a traditional Neori song that translates to It hasn't been a month since I came. The song revolves around a tale of a Neori trader who went to Tibet for work and his newly wedded wife. Dating back to the late 18th century, this ballad is composed in Nepal Vasa. This pregnant song of tragedy is believed to be the inspiration for Munam Madan, a constant epic narrative in Nepali language written by Lakshmi Prasad Devkota in 1936. The Newari song, Ji Voyala Lachi Motoni, effectively exposed several aspects of the prevailing socio-economic circumstances. It sets lights on the challenges faced by the working class, portrays the inhuman conduct of individuals, exposes the deceitful motive of so-called friends, highlights the prevalent extreme patriarch structure of society, and reflects the culture of trade with Tibet. Through its narrative, the song offers insight into a wide array of issues that were prevalent during that time. The ballad takes the form of a dialogue involving three individuals, the husband, the wife, and the mother. The narrative unfolds as the husband prepares to depart from Kathmandu for a business trip to Tibet. The song initiates with the wife imploring her mother-in-law to dissuade him from leaving. She emphasizes that she has only recently joined their household and yet he is already planning to depart. She proposes offering her dowry as a capital to establish a business within Nepal, negating the need for him to venture for Tibet. Despite her plea, the husband reassures her starting his return within a span of a year or two. With a mixture of sacred ceremony and emotional sentiment, he commences his journey, receiving traditional gift with one hand and wiping away tears with the other. As several months pass, with no communication from the husband, the wife becomes increasingly apprehensive due to ominous signs she will perceive. At this juncture, a duplicious friend delivers a message conveying the husband's demise in Tibet. Overwhelmed by sorrow, she expressed her desire to unite with her husband in death and commits sati, disregarding her mother-in-law's pleas to desist from such an act. Sati is a practice where a widow sacrifices herself by sitting atop her deceased husband's funeral pyre. Three years later, the husband returns home from his Tibet journey. His mother, addressing him from the widow, conveys that he cannot enter the house as they have already performed rituals for his passing. Her mother reveals that his wife resorted to Sati upon receiving news of his supposed demise. The son, struck by shock, departs and adopts the life of an ascetic. Lakshmi Prasad Dev Kutas Munamadan draws inspiration from the original Newar lyrical poem, Ji Voyala Lachi Madun. Lakshmi Prasad Dev Kutas rendition closely aligns with these lyrical sources. Not the least, Dev Kota does make alternation to certain events and characters to suit the contemporary context. For instance, in Ji Voyala Lachi Maduni, the female protagonist practiced sati after receiving news of the male protagonist's demise. This lyric was composed around two centuries ago when the sati practice was prevalent. During the reign of Rajendra Vikram Saha, the poem depicts the female character as performing sati. In contrast, when Lakshmi Prasad Devkota penned Munamadan, the practice of sati has ceased. As a result, the poem portrays the female character's demise due to grief. Furthermore, Muna Madan placed the character of Chetri as its center, while Ji Voyala Lachi Maduni revolves around the Newari community engaged in trade with Lhasa during that era.
Both G. Wayala Lachi Maduni and Muna Madan narrate tales that revolves around the Newar community of that era. During that time, the Newar community engaged in trade with Lhasa. Notably, the Chetri community was not actively involved in trading during that period. This distinction holds true even at the time when Devkota composed Muna Madan. The historical context mentioned the Newars as a primary business community engaged in trade with Lhasa. King Rajendra Vikram Sa's name is mentioned in the verse written at the end of Ji Voyala Lachimadun. In the Newari language, it is customary to write the name of the then king, state ruler, or powerful person in the composition of the work in flowery words. At the end of this lyric, it is written that Raja Rajendra Vikram Sahadev Vasaya Pratap Bolna, which can be considered to have been written almost 200 years ago, that is during the reign of Rajendra Vikram Sah, that is 1873 to 1903. 120 years after this, Devkota wrote Munammadan, the first edition of which was published in 1992 Pritam Lakshmi Prasad Devkota was introduced to the narrative of G. Voyalala Chimaduni by his friend Chandra Bahadur Shrestha during their time together in school and college. Additionally, the critic Puspa Chitrakar has mentioned that Ganesh Prasad Shrestha from Kathmandu conveyed the story of G. Voyalala Chimaduni to Devkota. This account was published in Swarnadhar from Bhaktapur in the year 2034 Bikram Sambat. The contradiction and complexity Inherited in this tale deeply impacted Devkota, leading him to compose the epic Munarmadan in just one night. Lakshmi Prasad Devkota never travelled to Lhasa, resulted in his limited awareness of the challenges posed by the route. Consequently, the depiction of the journey in Munarmadan draws heavily from G. Voila Lachi Madun. And that, while Munarmadan has garnered considerable attention and analysis, the same level of discussion and exploration has not been extended to the historical Newari language poem, Ji Voyala Lachi Thank you.